Aloha everyone, are you ready to see the next generation app that has dethroned ChatGPT4 already? Yeah, I'm talking about the one that just came out a few months ago and it's already history thanks to AutoGPT. Now AutoGPT is an open source Python application that was launched on March 30th of 2023, like just a couple weeks ago. It uses ChatGPT4 to act autonomously. This system has both long-term and short-term memory, voice recognition, text generation, file storage, and web access. Now, when you couple that with everything that GPT-4 already was capable of, well, you get an AI that can perform multi-step, complex tasks with little to no human intervention. It can self-prompt. Now, I'm gonna show you a bunch of cool examples of what people have already done using AutoGPT. And I'll even demo a site called God Mode, where you can access an interface running the AutoGPT app already for yourself. But before I do, just think about what the AI I just mentioned is capable of. It can assign tasks and goals to computers to be worked on automatically until they're completed. It can chain together multiple GPT-4s to collaborate on tasks. It can research on the internet and read or write files. It can build its own pool of knowledge in short and long-term memory. This has only been out for a few weeks, but wait till you see what it's actually been made so far. How about this? A to-do list that does itself. It's called the Do Anything Machine, and it's basically like having Zapier and AutoGPT merged together. So it has access to your apps. They tested it out by asking it to, quote, find the best person at Walmart for us to sell to, add them to our Notion CRM, and send out an outreach email. And it did the research. It added the contact. It wrote the email and it sent it out. You can see where this is going. Now this site here, this one's focused on coding. Its version of AutoGPT can debug, develop, test, and improve its own code. This guy right here, he was trying to have AutoGPT create an app for him. It recognized that it didn't have Node, Googled how to install Node, found a Stack Overflow article with a link, downloaded it, extracted it, and spawned a server. And he just sat back and watched the whole thing. Zero work. Anything from booking flights to ordering food and so much more just got completely automated. Customer service from an AI might be a little annoying, but it's a whole lot better than 30 minutes on hold. And very, very shortly, AutoGPT is gonna be able to get the job done with its voice recognition. Heck, it might even be able to click the like and subscribe buttons for you. But since I haven't shown you yet how to access it, I guess you're gonna to have to do that the old school way this time. Mahalo guys. On to God mode. Okay, so to access this site, you'll go to godmode.space. That'll pull it up. And just to show you guys this, I'm gonna put in a test here real quick. Uh, it doesn't matter what I'm typing. But when you enter it, it's going to say, due to high volume, you need to authenticate. So you can either enter your Google, GitHub, Twitter, or you can do an API key. I found that to be the most reliable way to do it. Yes, you're gonna have to pay for your API calls, but you know how it is. It's 50 cents a dollar. It's not a whole lot of money. So I think it's worthwhile because you'll get the most reliable output from it, okay? So to get your API key, you'll go to OpenAI. You can't do it at ChatGPT. You've gotta to go to the OpenAI backend and just click over here on the, your name. And right there, it's got view API keys. You click to create a new key, type in what you wanna call it. As you can see, I've got one already called God Mode there, uh, but you type in your God Mode, you hit create secret key and it puts a key up. And then all you do is just go back, paste it in there and you're starting. All right, I've already got that all set up over here. This one is already linked up. So this is the one that we're gonna to use to do some fun and do some testing. So my prompt that I'm gonna feed it is, I need to purchase a new computer for video editing. Please research the PCs that are out there and see what option would work best for Adobe Premiere that costs under $1,000. Now just to be clear, God Mode can't interact with your other apps like your email or your Twitter or anything like that. It only has the ability to do the research, the memory storage, the text outputs. And let's launch it. 
And immediately we'll suggest a few different main focuses. These are like the big topics that it's gonna work on. It's also gonna create subcategories within them of all the different steps it's gonna take. But the big categories are suggested. Research the minimum system requirements for Adobe Premiere. Suggest identify PCs that meet or exceed the minimum requirements and cost under $1,000. Suggested compare the identified PCs based on their specifications, customer reviews, and price to determine the best option for video editing with Adobe Premiere. I can obviously add ex extra things if I want to on here, but that sounds like a pretty good list to me. So I'm gonna add, add, and add those three on there. And I'm gonna tell it to go ahead and launch. Now, as you can see on the left side here, it's going to list the tasks. Below that, it's going to list any files that it makes. So sometimes it'll actually make an output file that you'll get, like a text file you can download. But it's going to say, let's search for the minimum requirements. And so the first command is to search on Google for minimum requirements. I approve that. And you'll see it's going to keep updating on the left side here with all the different lists of everything as I go. Now, generally, each of these searches takes eh, 30 seconds, a minute you know, something like that. So it's not a super fast process because there's so many steps. Okay, so it's got the requirements there already done. Boom, one step. Search for the best PC um, for Adobe Premiere under $1,000. Okay, so now it's gonna Google this. It's, it's gonna Google best PC for Adobe Premiere under $1,000 and see what it comes up with. All right, let's review the search results and identify PCs that meet or exceed the minimum requirements. We'll compare these based on their specifications, okay. All right, so now it's gonna browse, use the browse website command to review each of the search results in detail and identify which ones meet or exceed the requirements. So you can see it's going to this URL right here, digitaltrends.com, best PCs for under 1,000, and it's asking the question of which PCs exceed these minimum requirements. All right, Google pre-built video editing that meet or exceed Adobe Premiere Pro minimum. So it's looking at it in another direction to try to find other ones. It wants to Google that information. And I will tell you, it can spend a lot of time doing research. Uh, this is something that I assume will get faster and faster over time. It's got to go out and find quite a bit of information to figure this out. Now, one of the things you need to think about is the fact that this is about a two and a half week old program. So there are mistakes. It looks like it's trying to loop back around and look at the minimum requirements. And I thought it already did that. Okay. And it's telling me that obviously different versions of uh, Premiere Pro are going to have different requirements. So I'm going to say optional feedback. For Premiere Pro, so I'm gonna say use requirements for Premiere Pro CC 2023. And that's the optional give feedback. So I can add in a little bit of information. It's telling me this is what I'm thinking I'm gonna do. I'm saying, oh, okay, well use this requirements and proceed on to your next step. Okay, so now it's telling me that it's gonna browse a few of the websites that were returned, extract the information on each of these PCs to pick out the best one. And then it's going to summarize everything in, a, in the right to file by making a text document down here under the files that I can go back and look at with its, its final call on what it thinks was the best one. Extracting reviews now seems to have impressive specifications for its price range. However, reviews are generally a reliable indicator of the quality of the PC. Now it's gonna go take a look at the reviews and see how the reviews are for this particular PC that it seems to have chosen for me. Okay, so it says that it meets the budget and the system requirements, um, but they wanna do a little more research to make sure that it is reliable and suitable for video editing, okay. As you can see, it's good at stringing together a variety of different ideas to see how it can get there. When it runs into a problem, it usually goes a different route and looks for a different way to get the information it's looking for. All right, it's putting some more information into it, reading and writing out of that uh, custom reviews.txt. As you can see, we're down here in this bottom category finally. It looks like it's happy with the researching the minimum, identifying the PC that meets the requirements, comparing the identified PCs. And you can always click on these and get a little bit of a, for more information on what happened. Uh, what it actually did, what commands it actually ran. Pretty amazing. Let's create a new script for analyzing customer reviews, identifying the top two PCs. We can start with skeleton code that imports the necessary libraries and defines the key metrics we want to use for our analysis. Okay, a reasoning. By using a dedicated script for analysis, we can more easily modify the code and ensure that our analysis is consistent and repeatable. Additionally, using skeleton code will allow us to easily analyze the reviews by focusing on the key metrics you want to use. Amazing. It's doing all of this on its own. All I asked it was, I need to purchase a computer. Please give me some options that work best. Premiere under a grand. All of this is all of these ideas, all this research, all this analysis, developing this code to, to go through and look at it, all being done behind the scenes. All I'm doing is clicking the button over and over and over again. And some of these programs are set up so you don't have to click it at each step. So it will just literally run through all of them on its own. Okay, now it's gonna do some work to improve the code. It's gonna go back and add metrics and define the logic. 
putting together a system to rank which ones of these PCs that met my requirements is the best. It says it's using things like graphics card, processor speed, RAM, things like that to determine which one is the best. And you can see it's got its PC analysis file. And you can see down here now we got two files. We've got pcanalysis.py and formattedreviews.txt. It's testing the code with a sample of the reviews to ensure that everything works correctly. We need to read in a sample of customer reviews so we can test our analysis script. Okay, here's reviews coming from Best Buy. All right, so it says it couldn't, let's adjust our plan. We couldn't locate a relevant web page to extract a sample of reviews. We can use a file that contains sample data instead. Okay. Now that we have sample review data, we can use it to test our PC analysis script using the evaluate command. And it's still doing behind the scenes code improvement to, to get its script working correctly. This seems to be the toughest part. It's trying to figure out which one of these is the best out of the, it found it easy to go out and research and find me PCs that met the minimum requirements for Premiere, but it's now trying to figure out which one is actually the best out of those ones for under a thousand bucks, putting together a bunch of complicated scripts to do it, which is pretty amazing because I have absolutely no clue how to write a script like that. Not a million years could I do it, but it's doing it for me all behind the scenes. And it's had to go through this loop, you can see a couple times down here. It evaluated the, the sample code, it extracted more samples, it read the contents, it evaluated the code again, it evaluated the code again. It's doing that because it's going through this loop and iterating until it's got something that it's happy with, that's actually producing the result it's looking for, and then it moves on. And after watching this, I couldn't help but think to myself, Remember when websites were just websites and then suddenly everybody had to make a mobile friendly version of their website? It's only a matter of time before we start making AI friendly versions of our websites because they won't need all these fancy front ends and graphics and all that different stuff. They're just gonna be there to be read by the AI. So you're gonna want something that calls very, very fast, that's very quick to download, spits its information right into the AI. This is around the corner, guys. And it's even finding that it's not able to open websites. So it's running an internet connection test to see if the internet is working stable and performing correctly where it is. And on and on and on and on and on. Uh, I continued on for almost four and a half hours trying to see if I could get this to complete the task. And I learned a couple really important things along the way. Number one, I learned that I don't think I chose a task very well. Now, you know, to me in the, in the moment, it seemed like an easy and obvious choice to just say, hey, pick out a computer for this. But okay, first of all, Premiere isn't just Premiere. So if you're looking at Premiere Pro, you're gonna have a different set of requirements if you're trying to record 8K or 4K or regular high definition. So. That's a little confusing. I said a PC, it looked at both PCs and laptops. Now, within that, then it's gotta look at all these different factors like GPU, RAM, processor, uh, and then it even went in and tried to look at reviews. So really, it, it had a lot more data to try to analyze than I had thought when I originally gave it the problem. Now, it was cool to watch the process because Literally, it was a lot like what a human would do where it would go and look up information and then go back and look at the page again and look at the information, and look at the page again. But it seemed to be stuck in this forever. By the time it hit the end, and I, I, I was at 135 different tasks that it had tried to complete. And at that point, it was really starting to bog down and, and each task was taking seven, eight, 10 minutes. So I tried to just tell it, hey, look, give me the answers you got. Give me what you got best. And it couldn't. No matter how many times I put that into the uh, in the little box there to try to indicate and say, this is your next step, give me some answers, the process system couldn't. So eventually I had to scrap this without ever successfully getting it. Um, I did find in one of the files, there were two PCs that had listed, two laptops. I looked at them and they looked like decent choices, but by no means did it accomplish this task successfully. So I moved on and tried a couple other tasks. Next, I went for what seemed like a more simple task to me. I said, purchase a pair of Air Jordans. I didn't give any specifications. I didn't think there were nearly as many varieties like there were with PCs. So I thought this one might work well. And it went ahead and started doing some research. This also went to about 25 tasks and seemed stuck in this endless research loop trying to find it. So I went and dug out from its text. It had already chosen a pair of Air Jordans. 
a men's US size one Air Jordan low sneaker. So I decided to pull it up and take a look. And I'll be honest, I think it chose a great Jordan. I didn't realize that they'd even made them in this style and I am interested. And to be perfectly honest, I may end up picking up a pair because I really like the way these shoes looked. So good choice. It did good, it researched, it picked a choice. Uh, it just got really stuck, especially trying to find the prices. I don't think AutoGPT has figured out yet how to get information off of a web page. And that's why I say I think that there's going to come a time when AI versions of web pages are out there so that it can quickly and easily get the information it needs without getting bogged down and confused. So next I decided to go for a different task that's gonna be a little more research oriented. I said, you are my research assistant for a YouTube channel that teaches marketers and business owners how to become more productive with ChatGPT. Yep. All right, today is Thursday, April 17th, 2023, and I need you to help me write an article on the emergence of AutoGPT. Please include descriptions, references, interesting findings, and future-based questions about where this is going. Also, prepare a funny intro. And it put together a couple basic tasks. It decided to conduct research on AutoGPT and its emergence in the field of marketing and business productivity. It also decided to compile a list of interesting findings and references related to AutoGPT, including its benefits and potential drawbacks. And finally, it decided to draft an article on the emergence of AutoGPT, including a funny intro, descriptions of AutoGPT, references, and future-based questions about where this technology is headed. And that seemed like a pretty good list for me. So I let it go do its thing. Uh, this actually did complete. It took about 25 different steps and it completed. And this is what it gave me, which is part of the article. Now, fortunately, as it was going through, I was watching it and I saw where it looked like it popped up the entire article it was writing. So I copy and pasted it. And this is actually what it wrote. Now, for some reason, when it copied that article and formatted it, into the final text document he gave me here, it cut off. You can see here at about this little line here I've got on the right hand side shows where it cut off, but it did not give me all the text that was in there. The article in my Word document clearly has some formatting issues. It's still using these backslash ends, which I think are a, some sort of a carriage return in um, JavaScript, not a coder. But either way, the final document cut off. It didn't give me everything that it was supposed to give me. Instead, it only gave me part of the article. But if you read this, it's a pretty darn good article. It did a good job of going out and researching AutoGPT. Considering this is a two week old app, it's brand new information. It's got to go out and search and find it. Obviously, none of this is in GPT Force database. So it did a great job going out, researching, and putting together the article. Not so great on the whole putting together a funny intro. Uh, I don't. I didn't even find anything that was an attempt at this by it. But well done on the research. In the end, it doesn't look like AutoGPT is fully ready. It's kind of what we expected. This is a three week old technology at this point with amazing potential, amazing promise, but some pitfalls. You know, we tried to get it to find me a laptop. It got stuck in analysis paralysis, did 135 steps and never gave me any answers. I tried to get it to purchase a pair of Air Jordans. It actually went out and researched and found a good pair of them, but got stuck trying to figure out pricing and comparing reviews and wasn't getting anywhere. And then I told it to write me an article. And that one, it did a much better job of researching, putting together and structuring the article, but it didn't give me the complete document. It cut off some of the text. Nonetheless, each time it did a great job of picking out the steps it needed to take. It did a great job of iterating and improving and figuring out what mistakes it had run. When it was going to try to find Premiere, it wrote multiple rounds of code. It put together CSV spreadsheets to analyze the data. It tried all kinds of different ways to get reviews and get the review data in there. And while it struggled to scrape websites properly, the thought process behind it was very, very intelligent and very human-like, very much like what I would actually be doing if I were researching this and trying to answer this question myself. So in the long term, I think that AutoGPT is going to be massive. And I think by summer, you're gonna see this absolutely taking over with programs that are tied into all your different apps and able to make intelligent decisions and move on different steps on their own. Well, thank you guys again. If you did make it to this point, please make sure you click that like and subscribe buttons down below so we can share this with more people. And if you're gonna attempt to access God mode yourself, you're gonna need to have an open AI account, not just a chat GPT account, but an open AI account. So in case that's something you're not familiar with, I'm gonna go ahead and link you to that right up here.